I love it. Shockingly, I absolutely love it. It's crazy to think that I expect to get 25 days. You're like, how are you today? Welcome to A Wanderlust for Life. I'm Jessica and in this expat life video series, I'm gonna be sharing different parts about living in Amsterdam and living in the Netherlands. In this video, I'm gonna talk about habits that I've picked up living in the Netherlands as an American. One that might not surprise you is riding a bike. I rode a bike when I lived in the United States, but not very often. I tried to, I only lived a mile from work on one road, it was Main Street. I had to go from home to work straight through a couple stoplights, not a big deal. But as a lot of you Americans know, the infrastructure just isn't there in a lot of places. And the city I lived in was actually like the bike capital of Virginia. I still don't really know how it got that name because you had to ride on the shoulder, like um, that, what do you call that, a skirt? And it was always rocky and on the main intersection where there's a four way and everybody's going right or left, nobody looks out for you. And it's very scary. And I would get shouted out like, go ride on the sidewalk. And funny enough, uh, <laughs> The courthouse was right in between my house and where my office was, and it was illegal to ride on the sidewalk in that area. I, I don't know why specifically that area, but that's what it was. So even though it was super easy and straight, it was terrifying, so I didn't do it very often, especially when it got dark out, because I just didn't trust the drivers, and honestly, they didn't trust me. The other thing that I have loved and so gotten in the habit with, okay, Riding a bike around here is kind of your car, right? But at the same time, public transportation is so easy and we have our personalized Obey chip card, which is our transit card. And you don't have to do anything with it because it's tied to your bank account and you just scan in, scan out. It's as easy as that. So we have taken to having day trips by train or even just riding into the town when it's really nasty weather or when you're lazy. <laughs> but both of those things together are the culmination of how we get around. We have our bike for quick trips, especially in our neighborhood or to go to the grocery store or the doctor or whatever. And then you have the bus to get to the main parts of the city. It's quite nice, I have to say. A couple social things are the three kisses. So in the Netherlands, you do the Dutch three kisses. I know there are other places in Europe that do that. Um, a lot of people think the two kisses are quite normal in most of Europe, but there are other places that do the three kisses. So it's it was hard to get used to it because you didn't know which way to go. I think I usually go right, left, right, <laughs> if I remember correctly. And then uh, it seems to be if you are close to somebody, you can just do one, but you never really do two. And then you talk during it. So you're like, how are you today? And it's so funny, especially with my taller friends. Yes, it's crazy. And women will do it to men and women. So. Yeah, it's it's a habit that I'm used to now. Well, pre 2020, it was a habit I was used to. And I quite liked because I felt like it was a nice social thing. It was a nice, like, you kind of felt integrated a little bit more because even if it was a non-Dutch person, you would still do it. And I don't know, I loved that because it was something simple that you knew you were here, you were in the Netherlands and you're part of this social contract. Um, but yeah, it's just very, very fun. And along those lines, socially around here, it's less spontaneous typically. Uh, people will book up their social calendar months in advance. So I've gotten used to planning parties one or two months in advance. And that has been nice because I'm a planner anyway. So I really appreciate having all that time to prep and see who's coming. And you tend to be on time for things. Boral is awesome. So if you live in an office or even if you don't and you work with other people, on Fridays sometimes, like when I worked at booking.com, we would have it at the last Friday of the month and they booked out certain bars and you would just go there and there were drinks and snacks and it was all free. It was part of the culture. I'm not sure that most companies pay for it. You probably have to pay for yourself a lot of times, but it was so nice because it, it was kind of part of your work. You were kind of expected to go. It's not like anybody would be mad if you didn't, but it is an expectation that you go and you socialize with your coworkers because you get kind of more laid back and you can might maybe get some work done as well. And I don't know, it's just a fun, it's not just after work drinks like you might have in the US with your favorite coworkers. It's like the office as a whole. Everybody will go out. I mean, I'm pretty sure we saw our CEO there quite a few times. Yeah, 
at booking. So there you go, CEOs, VPs, customer service, managers, all of it were there. It's kind of cool. A habit I've picked up that I was surprised that I did was being more direct and accepting that directness a little bit better. As a woman from the South, being direct is not in our DNA. It's eggshells, you know, you're walking on eggshells if you don't want to say something, or bless your heart, or bless their heart, or I don't know, you just, what, what is the word for it? It's a uh, passive aggressiveness is a very big thing in the US. That is not the thing here. Uh, you are direct and I have so appreciated it because I have a little bit of social anxiety and I'm always worried about disappointing people. I don't want people to be upset with me. Obviously I want people to like me. And so if somebody says something directly to me, I feel like I've upset them or I did feel like I upset them. Now I realize they just want to acknowledge this so that I can change my behavior in the future if that's not the way that things are done. And the same with other people. I've kicked people out of my house because I'm like, I'm really tired, I need you to go. <laughs> Which seems super, super tame, but would you do that in the US? Like, be honest with me, put it in the comments below. Where you live, would you tell people, I'm tired, I really need you to leave? I've gotten to the point where I have to remind my friends, I'm like, just be honest with me, be direct, I will not be upset. Of course, you still wanna be nice about it. It's not like, get the hell out of my house. <laughs> It's just like, hey guys, I'm, I'm getting pretty tired. Can we shelf this and hang out later? Um, or, you know what? I really didn't like that you did that. Can we try again? Or something like that. So still be nice, but be direct. I love it. Shockingly, I absolutely love it. I have less fear. Just generally, I have less fear in the Netherlands about my safety which I, you know, there were things where, you know, when you come from the US, you hear a pop, big pop and you assume that it's a gunshot. I don't know if everybody does that, but I think that's probably pretty common. And around here, that's just not the case. You don't assume that. Your first thought is a, a bike tire popped or somebody dropped something or goodness gracious, sometimes those fireworks drive me up the wall. They love their fireworks here. That is not a habit I've gotten into, <laughs> sorry. But safety is a really big thing and the habit, I guess it's not as much of a habit as an expectation now that I expect to be safe. And the habit is I'm not fearful anymore. I'm not fearful of walking home at night or anything like that or riding public transportation at night. That's completely changed. And alongside that, the healthcare system has made things a lot better for me as well. I never understood how stressful it was to live in the United States as a person who will inevitably get hurt, inevitably get into an accident, inevitably have to go to the hospital or have prescriptions or anything like that. But knowing that you're not gonna go into debt from it is just insane. So it's a habit to go to the doctor when I feel like I need to, ask for a specialist if I think I need to, and not worry about it. And not worry about, I want this prescription or I want this exam or anything like that. And that's really, really big because I think for both of us, it's let us be more mindful of our bodies and if something feels wrong, get it checked out. Like you're not scared to do it. And yeah, it's just huge weight lifted off my shoulders. There is a really funny YouTube channel. It's Confessions, Confessions of a Dutchman or something like that. I'll leave it in the description. They've done these different skits and stuff of this stereotypical Dutch person or people because they do different, different skits. And one of them is like how to dress like a Dutch woman. <laughs> and the joke is that it's not very stylish here. So you're not expected to walk around in heels or um, to have this certain sense of style. I mean, of course, that is totally individual. <laughs> so don't take that as like gospel or anything. But the habit that changed here is being more comfortable with whatever I want to wear and not feeling like I'm going to be judged because you're just not really judged here. Everybody kind of lets you just live your life and wear what you wear. And even though this is a thing that is normal for me, not to worry about it. If I have to go somewhere, like let's say you're going to a dance class across town and you're wearing a dance outfit, I still get kind of weirded out by that for, for me. But then Sean has to say, you're wearing a specific outfit for a specific purpose and it's Amsterdam. Like nobody cares what you're wearing. It's amazing. If you are here during normal times and you see people walking around 
in a tutu or in a costume. I mean, we have frat parties and bachelorette parties like crazy. And they make those poor people dress up in the craziest things. It's kind of hilarious. But again, nobody cares. And the vacations, having the expectation, if you work in an office to get about 25 days of vacation a year versus I was earning a day a month in the United States, so 12 days, but you earned it, like it built up. It's crazy. It's crazy to think that I expect to get 25 days and I will use them and Sean will use them. And not just because I'm a travel YouTuber, but even before that, you want to go explore, you want to see new things, you want to have new experiences and it's cherished here. Like it's expected that you go on vacation. That's something that I now expect of myself. So yeah, that's just been so, Good to know that traveling is part of the culture and taking time for yourself is as well. Do you have anything you would add to this list if you're an American here in the Netherlands? Even if you're not American, please let me know down below. What habits have you picked up from living in the Netherlands? Are they good habits? Are they bad habits? Oh, now I'm trying to think if I have any bad habits. Okay, that might have to be another video. <laughs> if you think there are a bunch of bad habits that you pick up here, maybe eating too much cheese, that, that could be one. Anyway, if you enjoyed this kind of video, please go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Did you know that more than 90% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed? So go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you join the YouTube family and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.